So our next talk is by Dan uh, Dan Lane, Dr. Jensen. It's about supporting content creators or satisfying your inner Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah.
uh, it was obviously less of an issue for me as a student because that was being a student. There is some kind of idea that students don't have bills. They do, they just don't notice. And then they have massive debt. But that's just the norm. Uh, whereas when you get a little bit older, you realize that you have bills and massive debts. And you kind of want to make those a little bit smaller or easier to manage. So we need some way of dealing with this. And we want to be able to offer that to people. So a description of some of the texts that we have in existence which allow us to support that kind of situation. We have this thing called the Open Collaboration Services, uh, a part of the social desktop. Um, it was called GitHub New Stuff, but it's now called OCS. Um, of course, you all know it. If you've used it, any software essentially built by KDE over the last decade, you will have seen these little buttons with a star on it that says get new wallpapers or uh, download uh, vocabularies for uh, Kali, uh, K-stars uh, being the kind of thing. And basically, the same trick that is employed on, uh, on the Android uh, store for any kind of large game or anything. Basically, you can't upload anything to the Android Play Store. That's larger than 50 megs, so you need some way of downloading it. And we have a similar situation with things like KSTAR, where the data sets are somewhere in the region of 500 gigs, uh, if you want all of it. Um, and you obviously can't stick that on a distribution CD, though you can ship KSTARs itself, which is sort of small. So we have a way of supporting that. So that's what the KSTARs add on thing is. That is also. Uh, using OCS. Um, and of course, over the, over the decades, everybody has hated on it at some point or another. I've not been uh, innocent of this myself. Um, one of the most sort of well-known issues is a very technical but very silly issue. Basically, it was built around what was available on KDE Look at the time, which means that we don't have a list of preview images, we have a specific number of predefined potential uh, previews, which means that there is a maximum of 10 rather than an arbitrary large number, which would have made a lot more sense. However, all of that apart, through all of the various attempts at killing it off or changing it drastically or replacing it with something else, it's still here. Um, and uh, as of last year, um, this is basically the uh, first anniversary of CBUS's um, uh, announcement last year of the main server implementation finally, after a decade of attempting to make it happen, becoming a key. Project. So everything and free software and free software. Most importantly, yes, uh, it wasn't at the time uh, and for various reasons. But the but the, all of the server side implementation is now true free software. It's if we could make it any freer, we would. <laughs> um, but there are some uh, there's always slight issues with that sort of thing, uh, which means that the data is currently still owned by some commercial entity because data protection legislation in Germany doesn't allow for that to be transferred to another and that's actually kind of nice. So it means that all of those, uh, all of the massive amount of data we have is still there and it's still protected. Basically means that, yeah, it's, it's very nice, it's very safe, it's very nice. <laughs> There's actually a contract in place which... Um, ah yes, there's the poison pill contract. Which says, Dumps of the data to gate regularly. Yeah. So, in case um, this commercial entity does not what KE wants, KE can um, take both the code and the service um, and run it itself or have someone else run it for them. Yeah, basically, uh, as a similar sort of uh, contract to the uh, KE FreeQ Foundation uh, exists for the KE store. Uh, it just allows uh, an external entity to run it, uh, but 
in case new systems, no, new systems, it's, it's technically Hillstone called Hydro One, isn't it? Whatever it's called, I cannot honestly remember. But the commercial entity that currently runs the KV store has a poison pill in place that if ever they were to do something that the KV community at large does not like, that commercial entity will lose its rights to host the KV store um, and lose the rights to, uh, to the contents as well. So the server component of it is split into three things. So we have the OCS file server, which is, as it says, the central uh, content store. It hosts all of the actual content. Uh, it's a wide distributed uh, system. Kind of, kind of, it's, it's a lot more stable, uh, not stable, it's a lot more scalable uh, as an architecture than the old one, uh, which was very lean, but not scalable and had to run on a single server. Which, if we're trying to do software distribution on uh, the site as well, isn't really an option. Uh, so that was fixed. Um, there's the CDN, which is a, is really really small. It's a content distribution network, uh, kind of similar to Mirrorbrain. Um, and then there is the OCS web server, which is sort of the bit that most people will see. Uh, it's got the web store itself, so all of the various websites. Uh, this this three listed here, four essentially, but there are, there's something like 50 of them uh, in total. Uh, a bunch of historical ones as well, so if you want to look into some, uh, if, if you've forgotten that certain things existed, like, uh, the, uh, like the, the very, very shiny enlightenment things that exists on there as well, uh, there's all kinds of interesting historical uh, documentation on there. Uh, so all of the content that existed on KD.org and the other desktop.org network back in the day still exists. It's just been uh, put to one side slightly. Uh, still available, but not quite so in your face. Uh, it's all also available through RSS, which is useful if you uh, uh, have if, if you want to show a certain uh, category of data on a website somewhere. Uh, there's a bunch of buttons and widgets and things, so if you have a piece of content on the store that you want to show to people on your own website, you can get a piece of code that you just insert um, in your, on your website and then it will show download statistics and all sorts. Um, I was using my own data, which is ancient and, and minimal, so the, the Example there would be the first supporter on the Reinhard Atkins set because no one supports it. Uh, that's not a be sad for me thing, <laughs> that's just it's a very sort of strange little thing. Um, uh, and there is perhaps most importantly for us in this case the OCS API implementation, which is uh, a thin access wrapper which talks through. Uh, the OCS web server to the file server. Um, and the important thing here is that we have access to the whole stack now, which means that we had problems in the past that, yes, it would be nice if we could extend KU stuff, which I'll get to in a second, with some more stuff. But we couldn't, because getting certain things into the API would take in, in certain cases, literal years. So, not really very nice. Um, for entirely simple social issues, the whole system was run by essentially one guy, and he was snowed under like very few people. Uh, so, it was just really busy. But the end result was that nothing really happened. So, now that we have that kind of control, we can actually do stuff. Um, and then there's all sorts of other extra little bits if, you, if you're if you interested. It's all in the Git repo, KDE, or on CS web server. Um, and yeah, you can hit me later if you want to see any of that. Uh, then we have uh, also announced about an, half an hour after the announcement of uh, uh, the KDE web store itself becoming free software and a KDE project. Uh, we also announced the 
uh, split of key new stuff as a framework, which was uh, that we now have, in effect, three frameworks rather than one. It's all still in the same single repo, but the effect is that we have KNUS of core, which now has all of the non-user interface related functionality of the library. We have uh, KNUS of itself, which is named a little bit silly because of historical reasons. We cannot change the library name, which is the KNUS of uh, because we have a binary compatible promise, which means that we have to stick with this slightly older name. Um, but that one is, uh, oh yes, so uh, can you stop for us tier 2 now? Uh, the reason for that being an important thing is that the old version, can you stop 3, depended on, uh, in particular, it depended on Keo and KXML GUI, which combined to essentially pulling in the entire world. Uh, and we had a lot of projects who were reluctant to use KNU stuff because there are, you know, large dependencies are a problem if you want to distribute on things that are not Linux. Um, on Linux, it's just sort of, yeah, that's a part of it. You know, it's very, very easy to do. You just say, oh, I depend on that and everything is fine. But from, say, 3000 Mac or Android in particular, it's a big problem. So we needed to be able to split it up a bit, kind of the same way as the framework type effort. So that happened with this. Um, and one of the sort of reason for it happening was that we wanted to get a set of quick components made, which allowed you to uh, access a new stuff. Um, and having to require widgets to be added to your project seems slightly silly. So as a, a set of very simple uh, quick widgets now, uh, components now, which uh, allow you to show and download and manage uh, KU stuff content. Um, so the sort of most important part here that I was talking about before is the money side of it. So this is this that was the technology that we already had. So what what do we want to do? So we want to be able to financially support the people who create the content. Um, what we don't want to do, <laughs> quite importantly, is we don't want to particularly stick up a paywall. Um, in the content con in a creation community at the moment there is uh, this thing called Patreon, uh, which has been the source of much derision uh, between content creators who argue uh, in a variety of, of, of ways and some of them are very heavily oriented towards no one will see the stuff that I create unless you pay me. Um, so that's, that there is already a, a system for this, it's called Patreon. We don't particularly want to create that one. But what we do want to do is we want to make it really, really easy. Uh, that's easy for everybody involved. We want to make it easy for the content creators, and we want to make it easy for the application creators, and we want to make it really easy for, uh, for, the, for, the, uh, for the consumers. Uh, we also want to make it predictable. So that's the thing that things like Patreon does. You have a very well-defined monthly outgoing um, and that's uh, really powerful. Uh, if you want to support someone, uh, you, you can support them in a number of ways. So donations is one way, but you can also, if you have a subscription system, that's a, a way of doing it. Um, and what we, the, a, a sort of thing that came up in the discussion of this was the idea that it should be almost accidental. Not actually accidental, because spending money accidentally, generally speaking, is quite a bad thing. So uh, we want to make it so easy that you can very nearly do it accidentally. Um, so yeah, that's what the title means. It was late at night. Um, 
And so there are two different things. We have the donation system, which is a direct payment system. You make a choice. I want to uh, give some money to this creator of the content uh, in uh, KNS Core and OCS. Uh, that is provided for through the donation link and the OCS side is the donation page um, uh, element. Um, so that's exposed already. Uh, the, uh, the application developers have to implement this um, because it is there is uh, deliberately no payment system, uh, no donation payment system uh, implemented on the KD store because we want to essentially pass off that kind of trust to someone else. Uh, so if you're using PayPal, we want PayPal to be the handler of that. If you're using Bitcoin, we want one of the other Bitcoin transaction handlers to do it because it's a very big thing to you know, convince people to pass money through you. And again, it's one of those cases where we don't particularly want uh, to uh, scrape money and the easiest way of convincing people that we're not scraping funds off of your transactions is not to do it ourselves. So we're passing that off to someone else and then the money, you know the money goes directly, well, in the case of using PayPal, some amount of it goes to PayPal and then to the country and creator, but very specifically, we don't scrape any of it for ourselves. Um, there is then the clings, which is uh, the automatic side of it. So that's the sort of uh, predictable outgoings and almost accidental part. So it's all done automatically. Uh, it's happened for the last two months and none of you have noticed. Uh, unless you suddenly got a, a uh, uh, unless you have some stuff on the KD store that was popular and you suddenly got some money in your PayPal account that you didn't know where it came from. Um, it's interaction based, as it says. Uh, currently, one download equals uh, one cent. That is always subject to change. Uh, if you have ideas for this, please come and talk to us. Um, there is uh, the point here that this is the known outgoings. The idea is that things are supported by users on the site who have uh, a known outgoing every month. Currently, there's not a provision for this, but the idea is that you have the ability to pay in a sum every month, which then gets distributed amongst the creators on the site. It's not a requirement, and it never will be, but if you want to, that's the idea. Um, and then there's a monthly payout for it, where again, uh, the donations are uh, instant payout. Um, and that's, yes, those are the two important things in donations. The outgoings that you've got are varied. Um, you don't particularly know necessarily what you are spending every month, but you can spend essentially whatever amount you want. Uh, and on using the Plum system, the automatic system, you have a, a set amount every month. You know exactly how much you're paying to support the uh, creators in the community. And the live demonstration. It's a very, very short one. Don't worry. <laughs> Which basically is again because I've only got uh, a small amount of things on uh, the KD store, which is all very old uh, and consequently not very active. Uh, but it shows you where it is. So in your once you log in, if you click on your user icon and click on things, it will show you a payout rundown, uh, possible payments, uh, uh, payouts for this month. Uh, and it gives you in uh, however much you've, uh, it gives you a very, a very uh, uh, itemized rundown of everything that you've got. Uh, so it's all quite interesting in um, And so 
Yes, obviously this is all ancient stuff. If you go in on my, my, my profile page, it says that the first thing I ever did was 13 years ago. Uh, incidentally, one of these things, because why not concentric? Um, but yeah, so the idea is down here, is any plane factor can be changed at any time, at any rate. And that's the important bit here, please, if you guys have ideas uh, for what would, what would be good as a metric for, uh, for, for getting what sort of stuff is, is really good, what should we be uh, paying our creators for, um, yeah, you know, uh, come, on, come on, have a chat. Um, but yes, that's the, that's the ping system. But yes, and as with all sorts of things, if you go in settings, payment, you can get your PayPal address and your Bitcoin public wallet address for people to send it on to. Um, Anyway, yes, the next slide is, uh, is please tell us, uh, please come and talk to us. Yes, there. <laughs> There's some URLs and where the project is on the uh, on Fabricator. Um, and so, again, it used to be that you had to go through a, a, a person, gatekeeper, who was certainly a part of KDE, but not a part of the KDE infrastructure. These days, if you have ideas for KDE store, it's on Fabricator. Please. Yes, so. Thanks, sir. Very short. <laughs> Wallet, so whether or not you as a person are uploading it 
you can just add, uh, you can just set back to the project's the project. information. Um, but I would probably suggest if it is for a specific project, create an account for the project that we then share, that uh, our Krito team has a, a yes, sort of shared Krito, yeah. there. I think technically both has it, but it, it is supposed to be shared and, you know, yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, that, that sort of thing. So create a, an account for the project and upload the project's content uh, in that account rather than as a person. Uh, do you know Liberate? Liberate? Liberate. It's uh, a requirement. No, yeah. yeah. They have solved that in the problem with uh, group, uh, I mean developers hmm. and groups. Uh, like groups for organizations and they decide democratically how much should they take from the donation and they have some really good ideas that you should look into. Yes. Sleeper. Yeah. Sleeper. Yeah. 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 I mean, overlapping, overlapping uh, uh, ideals and specifically again because they are focused from what I can tell on the payment side of it, at least going by the name. Um, it makes a lot of sense for, to, to let Libra Pay handle the payment side and then having uh, the PD store handle the content distribution side because that's what the store is really, really good at and has been for some time. So, yeah, that's really good. Why is, is it possible that some you get a content creator gets a sum and he can find another product? Uh, not automatically. Uh, like the uh, amount he got, can uh, it, it comes up on his store, the, uh, and he want, and the person wants to find another. Person. He doesn't want to use, but wants to find another. Person. Well, I, like staying in the that corner. would be interesting. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, it's the, it's not something like it's it's any kind of provision. It's something you would do if you. Yeah, I guess they have the same Okay. Like, they have to do because everyone can receive and pay, right? Yeah, so we'll see yeah. whatever yeah. stream you get here. So it's, it's, it's a fun free distribution system as well. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah, that's definitely something that people would want to use to do, right? I mean, the, the Twitter people, everybody that sort of uploads artwork and everything to the KB store, they oh, I get donations, but half of that should probably go to the Twitter. That's okay. Uh, thanks, Ned, for this talk and a lot of applause.